So uh, the next thing we want to do is actually make it into a HUD. It's kind of an opaque, weird looking thing right now. Um, so if we go back here to our Cocos Builder, so we'll make it uh, half opaque. So let's see if we can add in here uh, an animation. Now at the moment the animations are set up uh, to run for like 10 seconds, like that's way too long. We don't want our animations to be 10 seconds. We want it to come on screen a lot quicker than that. So double click in here and change our timeline to be uh, one second in duration. Uh, and since it's uh, 30 frames a second, one second and 15 frames is going to be one and a half seconds. So we'll choose that. Um, what we want to do is have our buttons inside of our layer. That's going to be pretty important because we're going to move the color layer onto the screen and we need to make sure our buttons are children of that layer so they move with it. If you're not familiar with animations, keyframe is just a record in time at a particular frame of a set of values. In this case, it's going to be the position. So um, initially, uh, we'll go to the end. So at the end of our animation, we want our uh, HUD to be fully visible on our color layer. And it's going to be a position keyframe saying the position is fully on screen. All right, so we can see it's created a little position keyframe here for us. And uh, that's added a, a list of all of the possible keyframes. Now I'm going to go back to the beginning of our animation. And I'm just going to uh, move off the uh, screen. Now I'm going to use uh, the keyboard to actually m move this so that I get uh, accurate movement. I'm just going to press the up arrow holding down command and shift until it's just off the screen like that and I'll insert a, another keyframe at that position. And now we get a nice uh, sort of an animation here. Let's see if that works. There we go. So I'm going to play the animation. Play. We see it comes scrolling onto the screen. If I click on this little gray area right here where it says default timeline, that's actually displaying the name of the current timeline. So if I go into edit timelines, I can actually change the name of that. I can do a bunch of stuff. Um, check out the Zynga tutorial uh, for more on what you can do here. It's pretty powerful. You can create extra animations, chain them, all kinds of stuff. I'm not going to do any of that stuff right now. I've got it set to autoplay. So as soon as the CCB is loaded, it should start this animation for us. Uh, so let's just see if that works. Publish like that. Then we go over here. run our project and we can see our HUD is actually now arriving on the screen when we when we load that file. So that's pretty cool. Okay so to get our buttons to actually do something uh, it's not a hell of a difficult. We've got our buttons set up here and we just need to add in a selector. We're going to do it like that with a colon after it so that's going to be our sender and uh, that's for our do it button which is going to send the do it message. Second button is our quit button. Now the other thing is we've got to send these to a target. Uh, in this case we're going to send it to the owner. I'll explain how that works. Um, okay, now we save our Cocos Builder. Publish. Back to Xcode. And uh, when it's loaded, we have the option here of actually creating 
uh, an owner. So our owner is going to be ourself. Okay, so back here in our room, what we're going to do is we're going to have the do it selector just simply display an alert. We'll run that. And now when we click the do it button, we get a little uh, alert view and we'll click quit. It's going to remove our HUD off the screen. I've created a set of um, string files which I actually store away in each of my uh, scenes. <coughs> so for example for my bedroom here um, I've got all of my strings stored here in, um, in this uh, plist file and you see how I've got these keys set up. So for example the high window has its own high window key. If I look at say something like the uh, futon, the bed here, I, I've used the custom class facility to actually add in a data key member um, and that allows me to use Cocos Builder effectively as almost a complete game editor like I can put that key in there and that then allows me to reference through to the text file that I've got here and uh, in turn uh, these text files actually have embedded Lua scripts inside of them so when uh, the control panel gets examined uh, this piece of Lua script is, is actually run and the result of it is embedded into the text result that gets displayed so we've got a nice sort of a synergy going around here with uh, Cocos Builder uh, scripting environments because pretty much anything that's a string or a number I can go ahead and store it right in there. Also um, Cocos Builder gives us the ability to um, just create these empty nodes. Now this node here uh, it's calling up a custom class uh, which has a position and a few other attributes but it really doesn't actually have any visible uh, entity on the, the screen when the game's running. So again, that gives me the ability to use the Cocos Builder as a sort of a generic environment for editing my games and I can have it um, actually remove unwanted stuff um, and e enter in uh, stuff that I do want programmatically. Uh, another great feature is that you have this recursive ability. So here, for example, this laundry basket uh, node is um, actually one of the CCB files so it's actually this one here so I edited that separately and then I can actually drop into my bedroom main scene my uh, laundry basket object and uh, what that does is it just adds that uh, scene graph that node graph underneath the, uh, the room so I can have the same component appear in multiple different rooms if I want without having to duplicate it in each of the, uh, the rooms. So it's, it's a really, really nice feature. Um, the guys who have put this together uh, really deserve a pat on the back because it's, it's a pretty awesome environment. And uh, like I say, I think you'd be hard pressed to come up with uh, some kind of game editing tool on your own that would provide any of the uh, depth of functionality that that uh, Cocos Builder has. All right, well, look, that's the end of the tutorial. I hope this was helpful. Um, sorry if it was a little scrappy, and uh, I sure had to massage it a bit uh, in my video editor to get it um, to actually uh, not have too many mistakes in it. If you do find mistakes, please let me know. I will fix uh, what I can, or at least make a note in the text down below so that others can uh, benefit from uh, any errors that, that get found. And uh, thanks again for viewing. Okay, bye.